McGuire's welcomes you to the car craziest half hour on television. Traveling the world to prove that all car guys are the same. Regardless of where we live on the planet or what type of cars we love, the passion is the same. We're all just totally car crazy. It's about the hood. Welcome to Car Crazy Central, ground zero for monitoring the major events and personalities of the car hobby around the world. Each week, we creatively serve up a full menu of car crazy passion for you to enjoy via our car crazy television and radio shows, as well as on demand through our website, carcrazycentral.com. Our mission is pure and simple. <laughs> oh, that's right. We want to make you just a little more. Here you are, head of design for Ferrari and Maserati. I've been here for just over two years now, and the only description maybe that I can come up with is something like uh, when you marry the woman of your dreams and you go on a honeymoon, imagine that you're still on honeymoon after two years. But you organize this thing every week? Every week. I personally have been promoting it for four years, so it's amazing the amount of a, of a turnout that we have of different types of vehicles and hot rods, street rods, customs. For me, one of my favorite dogs, of course, is the Bulldog. It's uh, the right image for the Mini. It's uh, cute in a sort of a rugged little Dennis the Menace sort of way. And now your host, Barry McGuire. Frank Stevenson is living a car guy's dream. From heading the design team that actually created the new Mini Cooper at BMW to having the unbelievable job of being the head of design for both Ferrari and Maserati at the time of this taping. And now, since this taping, he's been bumped up to the head of design for the parent company, Fiat. Like so many of the great car designers of our time, Frank perfected his skills at the Pasadena Art Center and he's clearly impacting the face of car design because he is certifiably, undeniably car crazy. <laughs> Hi everybody and welcome to another of our ongoing car crazy specials from the wonderful world of Italy and all things Italian as it relates to the automobile and specifically from the, what we might call the motor valley or the silicone valley of speed. I mean, so many wonderful things are taking place in this part of the world in such close proximity. And uh, to help us understand that a little bit more today, we have Frank Stevenson, who is the head of concept development and design for Ferrari and Maserati, 44 years old, he has his job. You're gonna love uh, what Frank has to say. Frank, thanks for having us with you today. Your story is one of the most amazing stories I've ever heard in the entire automotive industry, I have to say. I'm a lucky guy, I am. You are, and he speaks English. <laughs> he speaks American, I mean, your, your background right quick. I mean, as, uh, when, when, as we've talked, uh, when I first met Frank, I thought, he, he's got to be from America. <laughs> you know, he can't speak that good English and not be from America. Uh, quick stories, uh, it won't be Ferrari quick, but I'll try to make it as quick as I can. But. Uh, I was uh, born from a Norwegian-American father uh, and then a Spanish mother in Casablanca, Morocco. At 11, we moved off to Istanbul, Turkey, so I picked up a bit of Turkish there. Spent uh, almost six years there. Moved off to Madrid, Spain, where I graduated from high school. Uh, from there, uh, I should have joined the family business or done something serious with my life, but I got the, uh, caught the bug of racing motorcycles. Wasn't very successful, so my father insisted that I either uh, get to work or get back to studying. And I took the studying option, so I uh, moved off to California and uh, got through four years of Pasadena at Art Center College <coughs> of Design, and then moved back to Europe, so. Uh, Which is pretty good training ground to be a designer. I yeah, mean, Art Center's a, that's, that's the, the best, I would say, yeah. When, you, when you're at Art Center, talk about the number of hours a day it consumes. It consumes 24 hours, pretty much. It's uh, if you're not working, you're you're thinking about working. So it's uh, or you're you're having nightmares about it. So it's, it's you can't work. You can't have a job. You're just well, you you're have just pretty much no social life. You really have to take four years out of your life and make it a, a commitment. <laughs> and about uh, 20 hours a day. <laughs> well, you you end up hooked on coffee probably. So uh, I mean, there's no way to get through it unless you're serious to make sure of that. And the guys who graduate from there are very very serious about what they want to do in life. Well, and most of the car designers in the world have come through Art Center. That's very high they, percentage yeah, of them. Yeah, yeah it has very very. Yeah. Rep good reputation and uh, usually when you make it through you're guaranteed to have a job. Uh, I grew up in a household also where my father started a dealership in Spain so I was always in the dealership during our summer holidays and I loved it. I just and the speedership dealership was for? 
We had, we sold, uh, funny enough, we sold Rovers, Saabs, and uh, Minis. And Minis, so, now uh, remember this, his dad sold Minis when he was a kid. His dad had his dealership for Minis. We're gonna revert back to that a little later in the conversation. Mm -hmm. So when did you, how early did you like sketch cars? I mean, when did you have this feeling that you might, well, I when did you first, sketching. I mean, well, you didn't just go to art centers. There's an no, early, no, early I was, point. Well, I used to, the first things of transportation I ever sketched, I guess probably were horses and things like that. But I used to be the guy in class that used to sketch all the uh, birthday cards and things like that, which was fun. Um, at some point, uh, I think it was roughly around 1970, I was walking uh, up one of the main boulevards in Casablanca, I think it was called Mohammed, Rue Mohammed V, and it was a Sunday morning early in the uh, one spring, and I just stopped. I froze because I'd seen my first Ferrari. I didn't know what I was looking at, but it was definitely the most gorgeous car I'd ever seen in my life. And it wasn't really then that I thought I wanted to be a car designer. I just thought, how can something be so beautiful and something that was so stationary and could just make you <laughs> get goosebumps just by looking at it? I was. Pretty much, uh, almost 11, I think, at that point. 11 years yeah. old. Yeah. yeah, I remember telling my brother, without remembering what I said before or after, that I was gonna design a car one day. It was just in me, and it was something I had to get out. And I told him that, and uh, it slowly evolved wow. into uh, being where I'm at. <laughs> Parents, listen to what your kids say at an early stage. It may give you a real indication of what's in their heart. When we come back, we'll find out how Frank made the jump from design school to being head of concept development and design at one of the most prestigious car companies in the world. So stay tuned. We'll be right back, right here on Car Crazy. Car Crazy. Welcome back to McGuire's Car Crazy and our exclusive interview with the head of concept development and design for Maserati and Ferrari, Frank Stevenson. I mean, Here you are, head of design for Ferrari and Maserati. Uh, uh, I, uh, you could never have dreamed that would happen. No, I mean, if you're, I've been here for just over two years now, and I, the only description maybe that I can come up with is something like uh, when you marry the woman of your dreams and you go on a honeymoon, imagine that you're still on a honeymoon after two years and you haven't really come back to earth. You know, I used to work on one design uh, at my previous company. And that was the maximum joy that I'd ever experienced. Well, let's, let's talk for a minute. After Art Center, you went to work at Ford. Ford helped pay your edu education sure. at Art Center, scholarship you there, which Ford and the various car manufacturers, uh, when they find somebody talented, they like, they like to do that type of thing, thankfully. Sure. Thankfully. Yeah, well, yeah. It wouldn't happen. Well, <laughs> we you wouldn't know, get a lot of this talent if they didn't to, scholarship. Yeah, so. that's true. I mean, Art Center is, uh, you need as much help as you can get to get through Absolutely. there. Absolutely. It's, sure. it's very difficult. It's also very expensive. So you went to Ford and Ford Europe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, uh, I, I experienced Detroit on an in internship program, and uh, great people. I mean, you learn. I learned more in 10 weeks in Detroit than I did probably in four years at the Art Center, simply for the fact that when you're working with a professional, you learn the shortcuts, and uh, knowing that Ford was based in Europe in Cologne, Germany, I thought that would be a great place to work. So I spent five years in Cologne. That was my formation years in car design. I moved off to BMW in 91, and uh, immediately after that, we kicked off what was to be probably the most funnest, <laughs> in, uh, incredible project anybody could ever work on because when you're inside, you know what you, you go through, which was the new Mini. This was definitely the most funnest project you've worked the on. The most in your funnest, career, I yeah. I mean, this thing was, it was snowballed. It here started comes off. This, here comes this whole opportunity to reinvent the Mini. Now, you grew up with the Mini. Your dad, sure. this goes back to the, his dad had a dealership that sold Minis when he's a kid. Now he gets the opportunity to reinvent the Mini, this whole new rendition. My approach was pretty much down the middle. It was, uh, I'd take an approach where I thought if the Mini had changed every 10 years, which it hadn't, but if it had changed in 69, 79, 89, 99, what would each of those steps had looked like? And uh, for me, it was more of a logical approach to do it that way because you don't alienate the people who had uh, been with the Mini in the past and you, you keep a, a DNA link going through the, uh, the design process. So that 99 sketch that I'd come up with was my starting point for the new Mini. When we come back, we'll see the unbelievable item that inspired the cool looking exhaust pipe on the new Mini Cooper. And later, we'll go car hopping across America and around the world. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back, right here on Car Crazy. Hey, hey, Barry, my ride is so sweet. Hop on over and talk to me. 
You know, there's a scene just right out of a, a Car Guy poster and Hector Rodriguez, you the man. You, you're the organizer here, man. <laughs> Thank you, appreciate it, yes. <laughs> Great event, uh, a lot of guys, a lot of work put into this event over a lot of years, but, but you organize this thing every week. Every week, yeah, we've been doing it here now. I personally have been promoting it for four years, so uh, it's uh, grown enormously and uh, it's amazing the amount of, uh, of a turnout that we have of different types of vehicles and hot rods, street rods, customs, and late models, so it's awesome. Yeah, got the oldies music playing here. I mean, yes. we have a warm evening. Definitely, it's beautiful. It's just, Summer's coming. You know, it's, it's car show time. Brings back a lot of memories, cruising the drive-ins. Definitely, drive definitely, <laughs> definitely. It's great, it's, it's, it's a great event here to have here in Lake Forest and uh, uh, have this amount of cars out here. We got over 200 cars out here. We've been doing it every week for, like I said, for four years. And the show's been going on even longer than that. But personally, I've just been promoting yeah, it for four yeah. years. So it's been awesome. Um, unbelievable. It's unbelievable. been awesome. And, and everybody just kind of shows up. Everybody just kind of shows up. I just uh, print out some flyers and promote it a little bit. And uh, the word gets around. And before yeah. we know it, everybody yeah. starts showing up. So how long have um, you been a car guy? Uh, for approximately since I was 16, so about 16 years. Really? First, <laughs> per, first car? 68 Fiber, and I still have it. Really? Yeah, it's parked right next to yours. It's a little dirty right, right now, but <laughs> it's parked right next to yours. So what's the best part of doing all this? Uh, the best part is the people that you meet and uh, the, uh, the uh, opportunity to see a lot of the unique vehicles and a lot of uh, from uh, under construction cars and seeing pr progress and uh, into very expensive cars sometimes and sometimes yeah. just daily yeah. drivers. So, what's the most interesting car you ever seen come to one of your cruise sites? Uh, I saw a 41 Willys uh, belonging to a friend of mine, Kent, that uh, he just finished, and that thing was just amazing. Been a lot of different uh, amazing cars, and there's a lot of them here tonight. What's the, what's the oldest car that's ever come here? Can you recall? Uh, 1906 Buick. Uh, and uh, he's, the guy's name is Dave. He comes out of Costa Mesa. He's the oldest one that, the oldest car that I remember that he's brought out here. <laughs> the cars that come out of the woodwork oh, for yes. this event every week, just it's, amazing. Especially <laughs> during this uh, this time of year when it gets warm when and everybody yeah, has yeah, cabin yeah, fever yeah, and wants yeah, to come out. Yeah, Hector, keep up the great work. Thank man. you. Love Appreciate you, it, Barry. Now did you ever find a car so fine as mine? Okay, let's see how car crazy you are. Why was the 1949 Kaiser Traveler unique among four-door sedans? Was it that the rear had a hatchback? That it had two parking brakes? It was only available to law enforcement? Or it had a five-speed manual transmission? <laughs> How about it all you sedan swaggers? Think you know this one? Well, we'll find out a little later in the show. When we come back, we'll find out what inspired the design for the Mini Cooper's cool-looking exhaust pipe. Oh, yeah, you've got to stick around for this. It's all coming up next, right here on Car Crazy. Welcome back to McGuire's Car Crazy and our interview with Frank Stevenson, head of concept development and design for Maserati and Ferrari. There's a lot of interesting stories uh, in the development of the Mini. And, and, and one has to do with your, your love for Bulldogs. And this, is, yeah. this story has been out a little bit, but a lot of viewers probably haven't heard well, this. Well, I, I mean, <laughs> that's a part of it. I, I knew as soon as we did the design in 96 that we nailed it. For me, one of my favorite dogs, of course, is the Bulldog. And I thought that kind of hit it right on the spot. It was uh, the right image for the Mini. It was tough. Uh, it, it's not an animal that you would just walk up and pet it right away. You have to have a certain amount of respect, respect for it. Yeah. So it's not yeah. silly. It's uh, it's uh, cute in a sort of a rugged little Dennis the Menace sort of way. That's how, so when you look at a Mini, you look at the front of a Mini, you're looking kind of at Frank's Bulldog. <laughs> and if you notice the grill on the Mini, the lower grill, which is on the bumper, is a little bit more forward than the uh -huh. top grill, uh -huh. which immediately gives it that, that Bulldog jutting forward. Of the it's clearly there. Jaw. Once you mention it, that you look at it, you yeah. just, you just see it. It's puggish. <laughs> uh, I'm sure all the people who sell Minis know, know the story and have communicated it to the uh, per people buying their cars, so uh, it won't be that new, um, but I can say it, it is true, <clears throat> amazingly enough. Uh, the last night of uh, preparation for our models to present to the uh, board of directors for the Mini, uh, you have to imagine that each designer had been working in isolation for about six months with his team of modelers uh, to produce the designs, and uh, my particular group of you, modelers. You, were, you, you had your group, there are all yeah. these other groups, and everybody's presenting there. We're all in different designs. areas, different parts of the world. We had people in California. And this is when they're going to select which one, which designer they're going to Yeah, the models were the ready to be presented in, in together for the first time, and they were going to see what we'd done for six months. So you're in competition with everybody else sure. here, so to speak. We were going to show we earned our keep. So sure. uh, 
it was a big moment. At four in the morning, I'm giving the last round around the car to make sure that everything was uh, tip top and ready for the show. And I froze behind the car, realizing that I hadn't put an exhaust pipe on the car. So I walked up to Colin and said, Colin, our chief modeler, we made a bit of a mistake. We've forgotten to put the exhaust pipe on the car. And he says, well, it's four in the morning. Those guys are completely exhausted. I'm not going to build an exhaust pipe for you at four in the morning as he takes a swig of his uh, nice <laughs> of his can Pepsi. of brew. <laughs> and uh, I said, well, we've got to do something. And the Mini always had a, a real dominant piece of exhaust pipe in the back. So give me that can. Chopped it in half, took the paint off of it, polished it up, put a hole in the bottom of it, put it on the car, and stood back in amazement that I just made the most beautiful exhaust pipe I'd ever seen in my life. <laughs> then. Uh, the next day in the show, they went through the uh, design selection process, chose the car, and then my boss came up to me and said, congratulations, yours is the one, but never ever waste a, design, a modeler's time ever again making such an elaborate exhaust pipe. And I was too embarrassed to tell him that it had taken me four <laughs> minutes and that it was a beer can. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> a year later, the supplier had come and uh, came and asked, uh, how do you want the exhaust, exhaust pipe finished to look like? I showed them the model and said, well, this is it. They built it. And uh, if you look at the uh, Cooper you today, now, you're, yeah. you're seeing the uh, direct result of using the can on the back of the, of the car. Unbelievable. And now you know the rest of the story <laughs> once again. Maserati, yeah. you're having a lot of fun. Yeah, I can Maserati. say almost that um, it's, I mean, you know, both are beautiful sounding car names, Maserati and Ferrari, and mm. it's, uh, it just slips off the tongue. but. Uh, one is an exotic, super exotic brand. The other one is more of a, a GT, like I said, where you, you see it more of, you use it more on a daily basis. But that makes it more challenging in the respect that you have to be able to sell more of them and you have to make it commercially available and, and it sells well. So therein, you have to have a little bit more control over what you're producing. But at the same time, you've got the freedom to interpret it in an Italian way, mm -hmm. a lot cooler. I mean, for our, uh, or a Maserati, you just get the feeling that somebody was having fun designing the car. It was more or less like uh, on a Sunday sort of thing. You didn't have to do it that nice, or you didn't have to do the wood that, that extreme, or you didn't have to put double stitching instead of single stitching. It's just a combination of elements that shows you the, uh, the guys involved were really enthusiastic about the whole detail. Mm -hmm. I'm just for making the cars more exciting. That's my job. I'm not going to sit back and just uh, be happy with what's on the market. I'm pushing for... <laughs> You know, putting people in, in, in the hospital with heart attacks of overexcitement. So, uh, <laughs> what a challenge. <laughs> when we come back, we'll find out why the 1949 Kaiser Traveler stood out amongst other four door sedans. So, don't go away. It's right here on Car Crazy. So, why was the 1949 Kaiser Traveler unique among four door sedans? Did you come up with the answer? Well, would you believe it had a hatchback? and opened up like a station wagon? According to CanadianDriver.com, Henry Kaiser himself was said to have come up with this brilliant concept. The rear door of the Kaiser Traveler sedans was divided in half lengthwise, then hinged to open like a mouth. Finally, the rear seats folded down and the spare tire was bolted to the inside of the left rear door, creating a large cargo space. Other big car manufacturers tried to create their own versatile vehicles, but they didn't have the Kaiser rear hatch. <laughs> And if you knew this trade secret car trivia, oh, you must be car crazy. And now, once again, Barry McGuire. If you love these car crazy stories that we tell you at the end of every show, uh, you might want to go to carcrazycentral.com and click on community. And there you, you have all these letters. You could read them as long as you want, or you could actually send your own, post your own stories for car guys all over the world to enjoy. Even setting up photos and videos. You can actually video your car and your garage yourself telling your story, uploading that, and car guys all over the world, moments later, will be able to enjoy your personal story and start connecting with you. It's great. We pick one each week of course, that we particularly like. This one comes from Dan Hildebrand in Scottsdale, Arizona. He writes, Dear Barry, yesterday I attended a memorial service for one of our former college instructors, Sherry Schroyer. At one point, her son, Jamie, came up to the podium and delivered a warm and wonderful account of his mother and what she had meant to their family. Near the end of his talk, he reflected on one of the things people remembered most about her, the red Mustang. 
From the photos showing her next to the car, I gathered it was a 1967 convertible. He lamented on how she would baby the car by washing it and touching it up, keeping it tuned and giving it the special touches that made it Sherry's Mustang. He continued by saying that although it was just a car, it was something that she loved almost as much as her own children. At this point, I thought how nice it was that he was able to lighten up the crowd with his antidote about her red Mustang. It was the next sentence that stopped the crowd's laughter and brought most of us to tears. Jamie had shared with everyone that just before his mother's death, she had given it to him for his 40th birthday. Jamie had composed himself all the way through his talk, which included a heartfelt poem about living life to its fullest. But it was the car that brought him to tears. For sure it was the gesture of her giving him something which meant a great deal to her that caused his emotions and everything he and others had to say that this day certainly honored her as a person. However, as you have mentioned many times in the letters others share with you, a car is often regarded as a living thing in a large part of our lives. I hope you may dedicate this episode to Sherry and many others who have passed on who have left a family member their special car. Respectfully, Dan Heldenbrand. Wow, what a letter. You know, more than a television show about cars, we are singularly focused on the emotional connection that we have with our cars. That's why we call our show Car Crazy. And through the years, we have tried to capture that emotion from every single angle, but your story adds an entirely new dimension to this discussion. To fully understand this emotional connection that Jamie's mother had with her red Mustang and the emotions that came with that car as she gave her precious Mustang to Jamie just before she died, well, you have to be a car guy. How is it that these mechanical devices that we call cars can so dramatically provoke our emotions? I've asked that question a thousand times, a thousand different ways, and I still don't understand it fully. I, I'm still perplexed by it. And you know what? Until we finally get that nailed down, I guess we'll just have to keep on making these television shows in the search of that. And in the process, try to make you just a little more car crazy. Here's some really big news. Now you can upload videos of yourself and your car for the world to see on CarCrazyCentral.com. Send Car Crazy e-cards. Download Car Crazy screensavers. Catch up on Car Crazy news. Watch Car Crazy television shows on demand. And enjoy our vast selection of original car crazy humor videos and cartoons guaranteed to make you laugh out loud this is the meeting place for car guys worldwide and it's all free right now on carcrazycentral.com where the car hobby clicks car crazy